Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kevin Miller, the CEO of a company called RunRev. We're a technology company that's based here in Edinburgh, as it happens. And this afternoon, I'm going to talk to you a bit about one of our passions, which is this idea that everyone can create apps. I had a look at the front of the iTunes App Store this morning, just putting together these slides, and the sheer number of apps that are up there, I think almost everybody in this room is going to be familiar. We've got games, we've got apps for cycling, we've got apps for the weather. And in fact, between the iTunes and Android stores, there's something like a million apps now available. Everybody wants an app. The size for the app market is $17 billion this year. And in these days of economic doom and gloom, it's projected to go up to $101 billion by 2017. I challenge you to find another sector that is growing as well as this one. But there are a lot of barriers to creating an app, and the main barrier really is the complexity of creating one. And it really depends on who you are, what those barriers are. If you're just somebody in the street who's got a really good idea for an app, but you're not a programmer, you're probably going to find it very difficult to pick up some of the programming tools to create an app. If you're a small business, you may not have the technical skills, but you may still want something to promote your business, to promote your service, or even to sell directly. You can go out to an agency, but an agency can be expensive. And to create a really good app, it's not just a case of having an idea, creating it, and then putting it out there, and everybody will flock to it. You have to create it and get it in the hands of a few users and get feedback and iterate over it and make little changes and keep going until you have this really amazing user experience. And so if you're a small business doing that through an agency, you're going to rack up some very, very big fees to try to do that. And even for large businesses, I often see them choose tools which are more complex than they actually need to be. So for those of you that aren't programmers in the room, an example of a, a simple, typical computing problem, here I've got a list of names, and I want to sort them in reverse alphabetical order by surname. Why might you want to do that? You might want to do that if you've got a display on the screen with a table of names. You've maybe got a table of photographs. It's a very, very common operation. And to do that, in one of the easier languages, which is uh, JavaScript, one of the languages of, of HTML5, you need a function which is really quite involved. I mean, this example function is nine lines long, and it contains 64 symbols. So if you're not a programmer, that's really something that takes quite a lot of getting your head around. And if you are a programmer, it's not very readable. So I'll come back to this example in just a moment. So this is where we fit in. We're RunRev. We were founded in uh, 1997, and we moved into doing apps initially for the desktop back in 2003. We're actually backed by the same guys that backed uh, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, if you remember from Steve Wozniak's talk yesterday. Mike Markula put some money into us, and uh, we acquired some um, IP from an American company back in, in 2004. So we initially built the live code platform for desktop computers, and in the last couple of years, we moved over to supporting the mobile platforms, both iOS and Android. So how do we reduce complexity? Well, the first thing that we do to reduce complexity is the language that we use. If you remember that JavaScript example from a few seconds ago, in live code, you can replace that with a single line at the bottom there. And it just says, sort lines of the text descending by last item of each. So that line of code replaces that entire block of JavaScript. And if you're a professional developer writing that JavaScript, you're probably going to want to put a comment in at the top of that JavaScript to tell you what to do. And your comment probably reads something along the lines of sort line to this text descending so that you know when you come back to read that code later. So it's almost a self-commenting language. And developers spend more time reading code by the time you come over and iterate over that code many, many times than you writing it. So it's very important to have readable code. The next way that we reduce complexity is in the speed of development. If you're not a professional developer, you won't be familiar with this. But if you are and you're making traditional apps, you go through this cycle of creating an app, compiling the app, running the app, debugging it, finding a problem, and then going all the way back to the start. You can spend your entire day doing that. 
And then live code, we replace that with a very simple edit run. And that's the name for the platform. Everything is live. So the code is running while you're editing it. You can make a change to the code. You can see that change straight away. Not only is that faster, but it's a lot easier because you can make many small changes and see how each one of them plays out. You can tweak a little piece of your UI and you can change the code and then you come back to it. So it creates this flow that means that you really have to store a bit less in your head. Of course, you can go away and write huge big functions and compile them at the end, but most people in life code just iterate very, very quickly. And we also allow you to write once and deploy everywhere. So that line of code that I showed you for that JavaScript example uh, compared with JavaScript will run on the iPhone, it will run on Android, Mac, Windows, and Linux desktops, and server platforms all from a single code base. So I'm going to give you a quick demo now, always a dangerous thing to do on stage. I'm going to show you how we build an app in the live code platform. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build an app inside three minutes. And it's a very simple app. It's going to run on my iPad, although it would run on anything. But I'm just going to build it for the iPad. And it's going to take a photo of the audience and choose somebody from that photograph. And whoever it chooses, if you email me, I'll send you a free copy for a personal license for, for life code. So I've got my little timer for three minutes. I did think of writing the timer app during the demo, but I thought that would be overkill. OK, so here goes. You start out by creating a new window in live code. I'm just going to set this up to be iPad sized. I'm going to set that to be landscape and drag out user interface elements. And in this case, I just want a button here. And this button is going to go right to the camera and take a photo. So I'm going to call that take photo. I'll stick that up there. I'm going to go into the code for that object. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that button off screen as soon as the user touches on it. So we get this touch message. I'm going to do hide me. That hides the button. And then I'm going to go out to the camera to take a photo. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a crosshairs image, which I'm going to use to move over the image. So I'm just going to import that crosshairs image. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the image I've just imported to be underneath the crosshair. So that the layer of last image to one. And then repeat five plus the random at 15. So repeat somewhere between five and 20 times. So we're going to move this crosshairs between five and 20 times. Move image crosshairs to the random of the width of this window the random of the height of this window, and the random of 3,000 milliseconds, so anywhere up to three seconds. So move to a random location between five and 20 times at a random speed. So now I'm going to set this up to build. You can see all the platforms we've got here. I'm just going to build this for iOS. I'm going to build it for iPad and set this up, set the orientation to be landscape, 48 seconds left, build this as a standalone application, I forgot to set the profile, 36 seconds, <laughs> and down to the wire here, build that again, And that's it built. And so now I will just take it out to the iPad, which is connected via Xcode. Copy it onto the device. And that's it on my iPad. Nine seconds to spare. Phew. So now, assuming my little local network can handle this, I'm going to display my iPad screen, load up. There we go. It has worked. 
And I'm going to try and take a photo. I can't guarantee to get all of you in the photo, I'm afraid. So if you're not in the photo, you definitely didn't win. <laughs> Try and get as many of you as I can. It's not a brilliant photo, unfortunately, but if the crosshair is lands on or near you and you send me an email, <laughs> I'll be happy. But this is why you need to be able to iterate over app development. No, you can make a little change. You can go in and you can say, well, I need to take a smaller or a bigger photo or change the, uh, I hope it doesn't land in the ceiling. <laughs> OK, gentlemen on the front row there, if you uh, send me an email, I'll happily send you a free copy of the personal life code license. <laughs> So life code is really used across uh, quite a broad range of industry sectors. It's used for SMEs to build apps as well as in education and enterprise. I'm going to finish on education because it's a, a particular passion of mine. But in the SME space, just to give you an idea, one of the questions that people always come back and ask me is, you know, can this platform really do great apps? Is it a really uh, competent platform? This is an app that's produced by a, Euro, uh, a company called Eurotalk down in London. And it's for teaching math to ages three to five. And it's a really beautiful app. This is it running on an iPad. It's got all of these games which lets you draw, the child draw on the screen and, and interact. And it went to number one in the App Store in quite a few different geographies. It's been very, very successful. And the developers there said that the thing that really made it for them, the reason that they chose LifeCode, was because they could just make a change, they could try it out, and they could keep going. They've got this very iterative development process. They've been doing apps for a long time. They've been doing them on the desktop before they did mobile. And they know that it's the little pieces of detail and the interaction that make all the difference. It does that sound play for five seconds or eight seconds. Is that uh, button big enough or small enough? And when you're dealing with kids, there are some of the hardest audiences to please. So. And they find LiveCode was, was a really great platform because it let them get very close to the customer and just keep making changes really, really quickly. Another app on a more serious subject for the American Heart Foundation about HIV in your heart. Similar story, small developer that was contracted to do that. It's another really well put together app. It's got great video. It's got interactive elements. It's a very useful medical app. And they said the same thing. They said, really, it's this ability to iterate and the ability to make changes fast to let us get this out and save really quite a lot of time and money. Just to give you an idea, it's almost slightly off topic from my talk today, but we've had, we have a lot of customers on the desktop. And this example is from the University of Vienna, who use, they're the largest university in Central Europe. They have 60,000 students and staff, and they use a life code built system to manage the entire university. So they've got half a million lines of life code running in an Oracle database, and it manages everything from room allocation through to course allocation, payroll for the staff, absolutely everything. So it's a system that scales, and it works in, in a number of different ways. It's not just something for building apps. A lot of different customers there. KLM use us for their real-time flight booking system. Uh, it's used in mission control for a NASA-built satellite to control that. Some of these other companies use it to do prototyping as well as to build applications both for in-house and for end-user distribution. We did a study of LiCo customers in 415 development projects. What's really interesting is that a third of the projects would simply not have been viable without life code. So this is the enabling element. This is taking complexity out. This is somebody that's had an idea, and they want to go off, and they want to produce an app. And we enable people to do that. Of the remainder, there's a lot of professional development houses. They push the platform a lot harder. They take it a lot further. And they said that it took an average of 47% of the development time compared to any other tool, including they looked at native, and we looked at HTML5 as well. So it was a very free form survey. The last area where um, LifeCode has been used to great success, and it's an area very close to my heart, is education, ages 13 to 18. I started this company here in Edinburgh as a hobby in high school, and I went full-time when I was 17. In fact, that's a picture of me, age 17, uh, with the hair and the glasses. I probably wasn't one of the coolest kids in the playground back then, but I got started because I had exposure to good tools, and I had teachers that inspired me in the classroom. 
And if I hadn't had access and I hadn't realized that it was possible for me to do this, then I wouldn't have gone on to do it. And if we look at the state of ICT teaching in the UK at the moment, it's really, um, it's, it's slightly distressing, or it's slightly distressing to me anyway. For those of you that remember, Eric Schmidt came to Edinburgh almost a year ago exactly for the MacTaggart lecture, and he talked about how the, hum the UK was home to all of these media-related inventions that we invented photography and the TV and computers, and yet none of the leading proponents for these fields are coming from the UK these days. And the education secretary finally woke up in January to the idea that education teaching, we teach children how to, to use apps. And children don't need in this day and age to be taught how to use apps. They've been doing that since they were three. They can use it Word when they're five years old. They don't need to go into a computing class to learn that. They need to learn how it's made, what goes on behind the scenes. And when you see this and you see that there's, there's almost this gap at 13 to 18 where schools are trying to teach with low level languages, and you look at the opportunities in the UK games industry, and you look at the opportunities that I mentioned earlier in terms of the app space, it really, I think it's, it's really very, very important. And this is a, a sort of typical view from the Scottish classroom, or, or it was before uh, live code. I hated programming, that's why I decided not to do computer studies during my senior years. I don't like maths, it's just like maths. That one is, I think, really important because computer programming can be about maths. We've got some really talented mathematical people, geniuses, in our office. But a lot of the programs out there have got nothing to do with maths at all. It's just somebody that's got an idea to produce an app to promote their business or a little game for their kid or for a child in their classroom. And it's just about logic and it's just about being able to express those ideas in a logical language. I don't understand this bit of code. How do I get this program to do this again? Students sit there. If you give them that JavaScript to learn, they sit there playing spot the difference. They're looking for a missing symbol for the entire lesson. It doesn't teach them the fundamentals and it doesn't get them engaged. So, Grace Mount High School here in Edinburgh uh, pioneered, they started with Live Code two years ago, and a, a teacher, Stephen White, um, wrote a standard grade intermediate and higher course based on Live Code. And they've gone on to be the first school in Scotland to have their students produce iPhone apps. And their teaching materials are now getting used around the world. We have an example just a couple of months ago from Eleanor Roosevelt School in the USA where they produced a, a really good game, again, that runs on, um, on tablets. So it's, it's about letting kids create apps that they can then take and use on the devices that they have in their pocket. And in all of the schools that we've seen where Life Code has come in, and there are now thousands of students using this worldwide, interest level has, rate, has gone up, pass rates have gone up, and we've seen that any school that's used it for more than a year, more than double the number of students come back to do higher computing later because they get turned onto it. And we've seen that now in the US as well as over here. So that's one of our really great success stories. And it really is just like an industry, it's about choosing the right tool for the job at the right time. So I think that's pretty much me. Um, yeah, it brings me to the end. If you're interested, website is runrev.com or you can drop me an email and I'll be around for much of the afternoon. Thank you all very much.